Thanks for plugging in. Today, we're talking excellence with TE Connectivity and the Interconnect Specialists from TTI ip e It's the news, information, and detail you need to know to stay informed about the latest innovations in all types of electronics connectivity. And now, here's your host, TTI's Scott Stimley. Thanks, Jim, and hello, everybody. Great to have you tuning in to our newest series, Talking Excellence with TE and TTI. I'm your host, Scott Stemley, Director of Supplier Marketing for TTI Incorporated. My career in electronics distribution spans 38 years in a variety of roles, including sales leadership, asset management, business development, and supplier marketing. The last 32 years have been here at TTI. Today, we're kicking off a three-part series with our good friends and partners from TE Connectivity's Aerospace, Defense, and Marine Business Unit, otherwise known as TE Connectivity AD&M. Joining me in this episode is TE Connectivity Manager of Product Management for High Speed Connectors, Ryan Hill. Ryan, welcome. Please tell us a little about you and your career at TE. Hey, Scott. Let me start off by saying thank you for hosting me today, and I'm looking forward to a great conversation. I've been with TE Connectivity for about 12 years now, six of which have been in the aerospace and defense group. My background is actually mechanical engineering, and I started with TE as a product engineer in our industrial group uh, before moving into product management about nine years ago. Over my time at TE, I've supported automation connectors, harnessing products, military spec relays, and now I'm excited to be leading a group of product managers focused on our ADNM high speed connector portfolio. So let's kick it off. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about how the increase of information in the aerospace and defense application segment is impacting the need for higher speed data transfer rates in these advancing technologies? Yeah, so without question, the, the need to handle more data at higher speeds is impacting nearly every industry. And the aerospace defense business is no exception. More data means more connections, and with that comes challenges in the connector industry to support high-density product that will perform in harsh environments that we service. You, you couple this with larger chipsets inside of these applications and the industry goal of weight savings in systems that fly, and you really have a serious engineering challenge or an opportunity, as we like to think of it. You know, as engineers, uh, we know that speed is not directional, but it's clear that if you were to apply a direction, speed is going nowhere but up. To quantify this, IEEE Ethernet speed has roughly quadrupled over the past 10 years to about 400 gigabit Ethernet today, and that's expected to continue to grow about 10% annually moving forward. You know, additionally, we are preparing for support of PCIe Gen 6, which is the next generation protocol that will support uh, double the bandwidth of Generation 5. And it also enables PAM4 signaling, which really allows for more complex and improved error correcting transmissions. All of these protocols will help with AI deployment in our industry, which is a big topic at the moment and allow our mission-critical flight systems to operate more precisely, more efficiently, and with more information than ever before. That's a lot. So how, how is TE responding to these requirements? Well, with higher speeds and increasingly complex communication protocols comes the need for connector solutions that can both deliver those speeds while maintaining and even enhancing the ruggedization standards that really define the products inside of the aerospace and defense industry. Uh, TE is working with open system architecture bodies, uh, VITA and SOSA being two common ones, to define and develop those connector platforms that are enabling new C5 ISR type designs. Uh, TE has been part of the VITA organization in particular for many years, and our technical experts have worked with customer representatives in the group to understand their challenges and try to bring forward solutions. We've really enjoyed success with our multi-gig, our RF, our mezzanine, and our rugged fiber optics products, uh, with multi-gig really serving as the flagship digital interface within Vita since about 2003. 
And many of these connector products are aligned with what we call the VPX ecosystem, uh, something that has evolved from you know, its early origins as just a little over a three gigabit per second standard and has become uh, something that is as high today as 32, per, 32 gigabits per second. Uh, the need for increased speed has been ramping as the aerospace and defense industry ultimately looks to deliver solutions with capabilities and speeds that are parallel to what we find in the commercial space, uh, where speeds today are already over 112 gigabit per second. So we're really talking about generational leaps in speed that are happening at a much more accelerated rate than ever before. You know, Vita recognized this as an organization and is really now making a conscious effort to prepare standards to support the next generation products that will come. And TE has devoted a heavy amount of time and engineering resources to help enable this. And it will ultimately culminate in a product that's going to come to market or a standard that's going to come to market that's called Vita 100. Well, it's clear the need for speed is, is there. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about the Vita 100 standard and what does that mean for the aerospace and defense industry going forward? So Vita 100 is really a suite of standards, including interfaces for digital, for power, optical, and radio frequency connections. You know, the goal of Vita 100 is to, col to align connectors and interfaces that will ultimately support 400 gigabit ethernet and prepare us to support the future of these IEEE standards. And what's really unique about the way Vita 100 is being developed is that we're now looking to avoid any type of lag in speed that the aerospace and defense industry has had compared to our commercial counterparts. Um, what it means for TE is that over the past few years, we have been developing a proposal for Vita 100, uh, which will ultimately define the next generation architecture inside of these military embedded systems. This centers around an advancement in our multi-gig connector, which will enable four times the current speed of products in the market today, up to 112 gigabits per second, while also delivering in the same form factor a, a 2x increase in density. And this is a significant leapfrog, both in speed and density, while coming with the same ruggedization standards that have made multi-gig the industry-leading digital board connectivity solution. And while multi-gig will serve as you know, really the backbone for this digital processing in Vita 100, we're also working to develop new solutions for RF, for power management, for fiber optics, and for mezzanine connectors. Our goal is to support Vita 100 in a way that we've supported the VPX ecosystem over the last 20 years. And we're really excited about the opportunity this is going to bring not only for TE, but for the industry and for the solutions that it's ultimately going to enable. So I have to assume then that the same types of technology and bandwidth increases uh, is also carrying over into the, you know, I'll call it the satellite uh, application, be it low earth orbit or, or other. You know, what were once individually uh, tasked vehicles are now parts of constellations, you know, hundreds of, of, of satellites in a constellation. And those guys are communicating as orbital networks. What kind of challenges do those represent, you know, from a space perspective? So you're absolutely right that we have these type of technology challenges in the satellite and low Earth orbit and even the space industries. And they are very similar to what we're finding in the C5 ISR and the UAV industries. And they're rapidly evolving and largely focused, again, around speed and density. What's interesting about space in the satellite industry is some of the requirements of the products for space. You know, we commonly hear about outgassing materials, which are restricted in these type of applications. 
And this certainly has an impact on connector design. But weight is clearly the biggest hurdle that connector manufacturers face to support increased connectivity in satellite systems. You know, satellites in arrays or constellations use what we call ISL or inter satellite link protocols to communicate with one another. And this typically takes the form of radio frequency or optical connectivity. And so naturally, this means more connectors built into a single satellite. And for TE, this means development in our RF connector portfolio, particularly where we can make smaller form factors like our recently launched Nano RF connector, which operates at higher frequencies you know, while offering significantly smaller connector footprints. On top of that, you know, to quote our RF product manager, where there's wireless, there's RF. It's that simple. And so we'll be looking to integrate more and more RF uh, moving forward. It also means development in our rugged fiber optics group. As satellites have more onboard functionality and connectivity, engineers are really realizing the benefits of fiber optics, you know, as a means to increase bandwidth in their systems, allow for longer cable runs without the use of things like repeaters or experiencing loss in their system, and ultimately provide the weight savings that the industry is really looking for. There's a lot that goes into that, isn't there? That's quite quite the task. Indeed. You know, these products got to operate in, uh, you know, space, which is a pretty inhospitable environment uh, with extreme temperature variations, uh, high G-forces, high vibration, you know, during the launch process. And ultimately, these things operate in a weightless vacuum. Uh, and they still need to perform at high values of bandwidth and connection stability. How is TE able to meet all of these demands? So there's no question it's a challenge, particularly when they're all laid out like that, one after the other. But this is ultimately what motivates our engineers in the aerospace and defense group. You know, we're certainly fortunate to have our partners in the digital data networks group here at TE who are working with the leading commercial users of high-speed interconnect and constantly looking to push the speed of these products. But ruggedization is really what makes our aerospace and defense connector stand out. And we've shown this across product lines and and across industries that we service. In defense, we work to design our multi-gig connector as an example to support Vita 72 vibration requirements, which are considered far and away the industry's highest vibration profile for board level connectors. This is roughly a 12x increase in vibration off of a standard connector portfolio. So you can imagine the wear and tear that these connectors have to survive in their testing. In space, you know, we've utilized the design of our commercial Strata Whisper product to introduce a rugged Whisper counterpart that's designed specifically for these type of low Earth orbit satellites. And really beyond this, we've committed many resources and will continue to commit resources to support both VITA and SOSA standards, which will allow the industry to continue to innovate and develop the next generation solutions with connectivity that comes along with it to really enable these type of rugged applications. So on the VITA and SOSA standards, you know, I know you mentioned there were several uh, customer partners, OEM partners that are a part of that. Ha- have some of these space guys also uh, been included in the, uh, in the standards committees? I would say they're getting involved more so on the SOSA side. They ultimately look to VITA to drive what's done at the board level. But as we think about system integration and how different uh, components and different systems are talking to one another, that's where some of the space partners would really look to get involved and start to try to influence that for their specific designs. But no question, uh, they are looking at this and trying to understand what the influence or what the impact on their business is going to be. 
Perfect. Thank you. You know, Ryan, thank you for sharing your insights and, and, and spending some time with us today. Uh, this has been very informative. Thank you to our listeners for plugging in. If you learned something today, you'll want to play episode two of this series, where we also hear from Eric Weingartner on high-power solid-state relays for the aerospace and defense markets. Eric is the product manager for solid-state relays at TE Connectivity. Until next time, I'm Scott Stemmely, and this is Talking Excellence with TE and TTI. That's it for this episode of Talking Excellence. Join us next time for the podcast that brings together the specialists of TTI with the connectivity experts from TE and insightful conversation about getting connected.